Welcome back, friends. This is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. Welcome to another important episode of The New World Next Week, where this week we're going to go over academic torrents and the Sochi Olympics. But we'll begin, James, with something that you and I were just discussing. Seems to have, it may not be leading in the, in, in the papers and on the blogs, but it has the chatter. And that's ultimately, I think, what we try and get at here in a way, the forecast of New World next week. So, James, we'll begin with a piece from Zero Hedge as Harvard economist is pulling all of his money from Bank of America, a classical economist, Harvard professor, preaching to the world that one's money is not safe in the U.S. banking system due to Ben Bernanke's actions, and he's putting his withdrawal slip where his mouth is and pulling a million dollars out of Bank of America. Now, this comes back to a piece that was originally posted by the banker in question, a guy named Terry Burnham. This was originally posted to PBS. Former Harvard economics professor, author of Mean Markets and Lizard Brains, longtime critic of the Federal Reserve, argues that the Fed's efforts to strengthen America's banks have perversely weakened them. And he begins his article by saying, quote, Last week I had over a million dollars in a checking account at Bank of America. Next week I will have 10000 Why am I getting in line to take my money out of Bank of America? Because of Ben Bernanke and Janet Yellen, who officially began her term as chairwoman on February 1st. There's also an interesting piece, James, from InfoWars. Harvard economist fears starting bank run on Bank of America by withdrawing his $1 million. Part of me leans to the side of let the heavens fall and ultimately let these banks fail and we should all pull our money out, James. Well, that's absolutely what should have been done in the wake of the 2007-2008 crisis. We should not have kept those banks on life support with the trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars of secret backdoor funding from the Federal Reserve, because that has only prolonged and inflated that problem and made it even worse. So it's going to come down on our heads at some point, and uh, whether it comes down now or later, it is only going to be worse the longer we prolong it. So I, I do agree with you on that. And the point, I think, underlying this is that a banking system is only as strong as its weakest link, which really, uh, in a fractional reserve banking system, that is public confidence itself. If there is no confidence in the banking system, there will be bank runs. If there are bank runs, the system will go under. And the FDIC in the United States might be uh, there to, to say they'll support you to the $250,000. Oh, it's insured. Don't worry about that. But we all know what those promises are worth. Um, they're, they're not worth the paper they're written on. And we saw that in Cyprus with the, uh, the bail-in regime, which, by the way, has been finalized. And there are back doors that have been built into all of the banking systems through the Bank for International Settlements and its various tentacles in all of the various uh, countries where it operates, that uh, the bail-in regime is here and it, it's absolutely, it could happen tomorrow in the United States if there was a big enough uh, bank run or problem. So um, unfortunately, this is just one data point on a seemingly endless list of data points we could point to, whether it's the uh, the labor participation rate in the United States being the lowest in 35 years, or the CBO itself coming out and admitting that 2.5 million workers will be chopped out of the workforce over the next decade because of Obamacare, or whether it's the plunging Nikkei stock index here in Japan, or it's Chinese manufacturing shrinking in China, or whether it's Greece coming for its third bailout in the Europe, uh, in the Eurozone, or whether it's uh, South America and other developing uh, emerging economies, uh, currencies collapsing. There are so many data points to point to some very worrying signs on the economic road ahead, and I understand you have a couple of other stories that might tie into this as well. I do. I think connect those data points to something that that does really have people chattering, and I get this latest from the last 24 hours from RT. Financial world shaken by four bankers' apparent suicides in a week. The apparent suicide death of chief economist of a U.S. investment house brings the number of financial workers who have died allegedly by their own hand to four in the last week, and that's Mike Duker of Russell Investments, William Brocksmith of Deutsche Bank, Carl Slim of Tata Motors, and Gabriel McGee of J.P. Morgan, some in London, one in Washington State. So this has a lot of people wondering. Again, all those points that you ran down, James, are these guys seeing that as as well? Is this connected in some way? The most recent story, James, is I, I think a really interesting one that folks may not have caught wind of today Nine die in Iron Mountain fire destroying Argentina bank archives. 
nine first responders killed, seven others injured as they battled a fire of unknown origin that destroyed an archive of corporate and banking industry documents in Argentina's capital on Wednesday. If you jump down to the bottom where Iron Mountain, the company's warehouse, you see their trucks here all over the states, we'll securely store your documents. We'll keep them. We'll shred them. We are your Iron Mountain. Tie in the connections to the report from Iron Mountain and all of those things. And you have a strange story. The company said, quote, we will investigate the cause of the fire and work closely with local investigators, police and fire authorities to understand what happened. The building was equipped with both fire detection as well as a sprinkler system. The company said, adding that it is contacting its customers whose documents were lost. And I can't help but think, uh, hello, Nazis. Uh, yeah, we, we destroyed all your paperwork. You guys don't have to worry. Hello, Jamie Dimon. Uh, you guys at J.P. Morgan. No sweat. It all burned up. Whoops. Shades of WTC7, isn't it? Don't worry. We'll, se we'll securely burn your documents for you. <laughs> it's a shock. And that actually, James, that, that story was told to us by... One of the I, the heads of the IT department at at my job, he saw that story, knows the kind of work that we do, and immediately came over to us and was like, "I think this story's suspicious. You guys should check this out." Well, I agree, and I hope if anyone out there has any more information on that, and especially the Argentinian banking system being what it is, I'm sure there are some uh, some skeletons that were that were safely disposed of in that fire. Mm -hmm. So, James, we'll move to our second story this week, the one that has everybody chattering. And even the comedy podcast that I listened to today, the, the, the host made a joke about, yeah, you know, in the Sochi Olympics, which everything I see tells me something horrible is going to happen on TV. So we'll take it from the New York Daily News. Why not, James? Toothpaste threatens Sochi Olympics while poison dogs, bad hotels, and the anti-gay row taint the games. The latest terror threat to the Sochi Olympic Games, toothpaste tubes packed with bomb-making materials. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security sent an advisory to airlines about the possibility of the possibility of potential explosive components smuggled onto flights inside the thin tubes. The warning, delivered out of an abundance of caution, came a day before the gala opening ceremonies at an occult Olympics where... Everything we see is based on bizarre, strange rituals and, again, connected to the Nazis and their iconography. But DHS regularly shares relevant information with domestic and international partners, including those associated with international events, such as the Sochi Olympics, a Homeland Security official told New York Daily News. Not aware of a specific threat at this time. You knew that was coming. But House Homeland Security Committee Chairman Michael McCall, Republican out of Texas, told CNN, the toothpaste threat intelligence was specific and credible. And Russian officials banned passengers last month from taking any liquids aboard flights headed for Sochi on the Black Sea. And, of course, the TSA here in America with the three-ounce limit, which is complete garbage and selectively enforced, proven by the liquor that we brought through the last time we flew. James, that's, I think, really the key. And, and there's relateds that we'll post up about the poison dogs and all the bizarre things going on. And our man Brock West actually just a little bit ago posted a Sochi 2014 security update kind of data dump to cyberspacewar.com, getting into all, all the threats, all the camouflage, all the digital surveillance, all the hacking, the, the Chechens, all of those things, James. Well, uh, you've uh, used the term many times on, on Media Monarchy, terranoia, and this is this is it, and this is what it looks like, and we all know who it benefits and for what purpose. So I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if some Michael Chertoff ghoul or some other Skeletor would emerge from the closet next week with a toothpaste scanner um, company that, that uh, is going to charge $100 million for, to scan toothpaste at each airport or something ridiculous like that. And I only say that halfway in jest because, of course, we all know what happened with the Christmas Day underwear bomber and all of that brouhaha. So um, unfortunately, we know how this all plays out. And uh, regardless of whether or not there is any type of terror incident, again, the terror industrial complex um, continues to grow on the on the back of all of this uh, terror noia. And to a certain extent, I think even the alternative media plays into it when they focus so, so much on this. And, oh, oh there's going to be a false flag attack. There's going to be a false flag attack, just like the 2012 Olympics or any other number of events in recent years where millions of people were predicting all sorts of things, none of which came true. 
Um, I think the point is that when these when events happen, like Boston Marathon bombing or what have you, yes, we have to be there to completely pick apart whatever they're trying to shove us down, down our throats in terms of an official narrative. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to be feeding into that um, beforehand. So I don't know. I don't I don't have any crystal ball. I don't know what is or isn't going to happen. But I do know that the uh, the terror industrial complex in the United States, in Russia, in every other country around the world continues to aggrandize and, and, and engross itself on the back of all this uh, this 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 total over the top i'll say it again terranoia that's it james i think there's there's probably no other better way to put that so again i'm glad we've kind of at least sort of put that on the record here on neural next week but ultimately it's the kind of big grandiose show that you and i know is all sound and fury tales told by fools and signifying nothing our third and final story this week as we try and do sometimes is is give you a positive story and we'll give it to you from our good friend on twitter at gj salisbury it's not only a positive story but it's also a great resource academics launch torrent site to share papers and data this comes via torrent freak Researchers from the University of Massachusetts have launched a torrent site which allows academics to share papers and data sets. AcademicTorrents.com provides researchers with a reliable and decentralized platform to share their work with peers as well as the rest of the world. The site currently indexes over 1.5 petabytes of data. One of the core pillars of academic research is sharing. By letting other researchers know what you do, ideas are criticized, improved upon, and extended. But unfortunately, it's not always easy for academics to share their work for a variety of reasons. So, enter AcademicTorrents.com, hoping to kind of change and challenge that status quo. The site was launched by Joseph Cohen and Henry Lowe, two PhD students working at the University of Massachusetts in Boston. The Torrent site aims to provide academics with a cheap and decentralized platform. One of the goals... And, and this, I think, James, kind of cuts to the heart of it, is to give research back to the researchers instead of having it locked away behind paywalls. Currently, most of the top publications are being monetized by publishers, but with academic torrents, any journal could and can distribute papers for free. Academics or anyone else who's interested can join the site and start sharing. NASA's 42-gigabyte map of Mars might be a good start, or even a recent copy of of Wikipedia might come in handy too, James. Well, what sadder indictment of the ac- academia itself, of academic institutions, could there be than the fact that they're now, what, a decade, a decade and a half behind uh, the people who just wanted to download Hollywood movies or what have you in terms of utilizing this technology for distributing data? But at least they're finally catching up. So, yes, this is a positive development. It is a good thing. And hopefully this will be the start of the crack in the wall that will lead to the opening up of this research that is currently being hit, hidden behind these paywalls, despite the fact that taxpayers are f- footing the bill for most of it in the first place. So hopefully this is the beginning of some sort of open source type revolution in academia, although I'm not exactly holding my breath that this is the final um, uh, crack in that wall to uh, to start the, the, the torrent coming through. Huh, maybe that's where that uh, that phrase there comes from. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, um, I, I think it is a positive development. It is something that people should at least be checking into. And it is, uh, there are some interesting resources up there so far and hopefully more to come. So uh, this is an idea that's starting to creep through into every facet of our society and finally into the hallowed walls, the ivory towers of academia itself. Which is, in a way, kind of where the internet started. <laughs> so I think that's that's a good full circle. And James, I think that's a great way to wrap this episode up. And again, we mentioned our, our friend G.J. Salisbury on Twitter. He submits all kinds of fantastic story ideas for us, and you can too on Twitter using hashtag New World Next Week. I'm at Media Monarchy. He's at Corbett Report. James, I appreciate it so much, man. All right. See you next week.